He is a shredding machine. <laughs> On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. And Jimmy's way of responding to his stress is by showing aggression. I think Scott's a bit scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. 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 There he is. There he is. Oh, oh, oh. He's lunging at me. I'm just telling myself, be calm, don't react, don't move, stay still. Number five. Jimmy. In Bondi, Kate is searching for her mischievous Jimmy. I know where you are. The eight-year-old cat is running late for an important hospital appointment. Okay, Jimmy is not in this house. Jimmy is a little rescue cat that I rescued around about two years ago now. Jimmy! Jimmy had been left at this boarding cattery by some people who had moved overseas and they didn't return for him. And the moment I touched Jimmy, I knew that he was mine. Hello? Are you under there? He is very fondly known as Jimmy the Jerk. What Jimmy hates more than anything else in life is change. I know it's very stressful. You're okay, don't worry. So even if one new person comes to the house, he loses it, completely loses it. And Jimmy's way of responding to his stress is by showing aggression. Oh my goodness. Over the last couple of weeks, Jimmy has become more aggressive than he ever was before. He is not going anywhere. He is not going to get rehomed. I love him dearly. There you go, buddy. But I have this little feeling that Jimmy has sore back legs. So he obviously really thinks about his knees and he thinks about being able to actually get around like a normal cat. The other day I noticed that he couldn't get out of a cardboard box. And if he's got sore legs, I'm going to fix them. Okay, let's do it, kid. Jimmy's feisty behaviour means Kate needs some helping hands to be able to examine him. Hi. Hello, Jemima. How are you? He's been good. Nurse Rachel has dealt with Jimmy's antics before. You got sore legs, Jim? Well, maybe not. Maybe his legs are fine. Oh, maybe he's just good. <laughs> Maybe he's just grumpy. What's going on with you? What I would like to find out today, is there a medical cause for Jimmy's aggression? So is he aggressive because he has sore legs? X-ray. What we're looking for here, is there any signs of osteoarthritis in these hips? And no is the answer. For an eight-year-old cat, you would expect if he had some degree of hip dysplasia there, that there would start to be some kind of changes to the bones. And you just can't see, like he doesn't have any little extra bits. With the hips given the all clear, next Kate checks Jimmy's knees. And click. See that? That's where the kneecap falls out. But basically every time when he has this leg extended, this kneecap is out. What are we gonna do with you? When Jimmy bends his left leg, you can see that this kneecap is falling out. And even when he's flexed, he can't get this kneecap back in. This luxating patella is happening in both legs. However, this left leg is much worse than the right. So that just won't flick back in. Yeah, that's just luxated. Jimmy's knees are a lot worse than what I had thought they were going to be. So his kneecaps are falling out all of the time. Some of the time when they do fall out, he can't actually get them back in, which means that he can't jump up which explains his grumpiness. And Jimmy has probably been suffering with these legs ever since he was six months old. To understand the best way forward for Jimmy, Kate has called in surgical specialist, Dr. Allen. Oh, I can feel the click. So bad. Yeah, I can feel the click. Ouch, ouch. So his left, when it pops out, it won't pop back in on flexion. It's wanting to sit out most no. of the time, I think. Same. Yeah. Yep, and same as this one. This you one reckon is, that one too? Yep, that knee feels pretty loose. So the kneecap, which is really shown here, mm. is unfortunately flicking in and out of place. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really rubbing on that cartilage on Jimmy's knee. So I think the best solution for Jimmy is going to be surgery. I think really the long-term solution for Jimmy is going to be surgery. Good boy, Jemimes. You're okay. Don't worry. 
At Kate's Bondi Veterinary Hospital, it's the day for her special boy Jimmy's surgery to correct his badly dislocating back knees. It's going to have two new knees, guys. Two new knees today. Ah, oh, not every day you get two new knees. See you later, Gator. It's actually happening today, so I'm super, super nervous. Want to take some mistakes on blood? First, Kate performs routine blood tests to ensure Jimmy's body can process the anaesthetic. There you go, little buddy. Oh my gosh, time for us to get ready. Have we got all monitoring things? We've got blood pressures, carpenographs. Look at me, I'm like a ball of anxiety. A ball of anxiety. I want to look at his bloods first. Kate's anxious to hear Jimmy's test results. It looks abnormal. Oh my god, I knew this was going to happen. Oh no. Okay, so this is a spanner in our works. He's got a, um abnormal heart test, so we need to stop. I've literally planned this like to down to the T and now look, here we are. So what needs to happen now is that we have to call a stop on this, which is really very disappointing. We both have emotionally prepared for this. You know, he's had his pain relief, he's had his pre-medication. We're all ready for surgery and we've had to call it a day and we need to go figure out what's wrong with his heart. Okay, in your bag. See ya. I just don't want to have another pet die. 18 months ago, Kate was heartbroken when she lost her beloved Benny. She now fears the worst for Jimmy. All right guys, I'm taking him home. See you guys, I'll see you soon. Hey, Jamim. Yeah, I know you didn't want to come to the vet hospital this morning, did you? Nope. In Bondi, it's a big day for Kate and her beloved rescue cat, Jimmy. Oh, Jim. So he, you know, he went to see the cardiologist. Yes. Came back How with the all go? clear. Oh. He's got heart of steel. Nothing wrong with Great his heart. Great news. Great Hello. news. There you go, boy, and we love him. I know. Hello, come on. How are you, Jimmy? The all clear from the cardiologist means surgery to repair Jimmy's badly dislocated and painful knees can go ahead. Cute. <laughs> gonna get new knees today, kiddo. It's gonna be a big day. Jimmy is perfectly well. His heart is functioning perfectly. There is no reason that Jimmy can't have his surgery today. It didn't hit me till this morning, like the enormity of like today's surgery. Like I was thinking, okay, like he's just gonna go to the vet clinic. And then I was like, oh my God. Jimmy might die. No. And then I was even thinking that like he might die and he didn't even get to eat breakfast this morning. No, but it's okay. He's not gonna die, is he? He's not gonna die. We're gonna look after him. We already checked his heart. Because he's like my heart cat. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. Look at him. There's never gonna be him. another Jimmy. He's there. There'll never be another you. I think when I refer to him as my heart cat, it's because me and him have a really special connection and it's not one that a lot of people can understand because everyone knows him as Jimmy the Jerk and everyone knows that he's really badly behaved. But I know that Jimmy knows me really well and he trusts me 150%. No. 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 We can gas him if you want, Maria. Despite Kate's optimism, no. Jimmy isn't too happy. No. The surgery preparations get underway. Will that do? No, Jimmy. No. Jimmy is not cooperating. He's less than not cooperating. Like, he's literally cracking it. Jimmy. Ow, 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 ow. No. Okay, you uh, go ahead. Ow, ow, ow. Let him go. You're all right. You got him? Keep him. I got injured. Maria got injured. And by this stage now, it's not safe. He's really stressed. He's really worked up. The only way forward is that we're going to have to gas him down to be able to get a line in. Did he bite you as well? Oh, no, he just like, he just got stuck, you know? Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Jimmy. You gotta go to sleep. <sighs> Jimmy's going to make his mark and he doesn't care how he does it. 
and now I'm going to have a permanent scar called the Jimmy scar. Hey! Hello. How, how are, are you? you? Good. Jimmy. It's a big day. Let's have a feel. Surgical specialist Dr. Allen will be performing the operation on Jimmy's knees. His knees are so bad, wow. Alan. Like, they're so bad. So the kneecap I, is so loose. So loose. Hey. I see him go up the stairs at home. Yeah. And Jimmy literally, yeah. like, one foot, like, yep. at a time. Like, Difficult he's, he's very sore. So these are pretty severe ones. So Do you think mm. that maybe doing this, maybe he's going to be less of an angry cat? <laughs> I hope so. Jimmy's kneecap is very loose. Jimmy's groove is extremely shallow. So what we need to do now is to cut into the bone, cut through the cartilage, and actually deepen this groove. The first thing we're going to assess here is the depth of the patella groove. Wow. So let's have a look. The reason why he has it is because so he's pulling that Same. kneecap towards the inside, yes. and so the kneecap never set in the right position. And so now we're creating him a new kneecap groove. Yeah. All right, can I have a scalpel, please? A hundred percent I made the right choice for him. This is the best possible decision for Jimmy. He can't live with this knee. He can't live with either of these knees. But essentially we're cutting through the cartilage and then into the bone underneath. I mean, this is like advanced carvery. <laughs> Important for you to just stop that okay, movement yeah, for I me, please. Yeah. Thank you. I got this, I can do this. You are doing a great job. So the part of the cartilage and the bone that we chiseled off, it's going to seat a little bit deeper. The kneecap then is going to become more stable. Just extend that starboard as much as you can, please. Yeah. That'll take that tension off and then I'll just tighten this. Thank you. I think now that the hammering part is over, I'm super, super relieved. This is going to change his life. He's going to walk differently. He's going to be able to get upstairs. He's one very lucky cat. I'm scared, this is the moment of truth. Great. So he's really maintaining that stability, no longer wants to dislocate. Whoa, look how beautiful this is. <laughs> it's like a brand new leg. It is. All right, good. Next knee. And what a privilege to be able to fix it, huh? Last stitch, Alan, last <laughs> stitch. There you go. There you go, Jimmy. Done. Look at that. One stable knee. Look at that. Doesn't move. And they're straight, Alan. Yep, nice and straight. We've been through this really long journey to get to this point, and wow, what a result. This is going to give Jimmy a new lease on life. Kate can't fully relax just yet. X-rays will confirm if the alignment of Jimmy's repaired knees is correct. X-ray! And Jimmy's new knees are looking good. So Jimmy's going to be no running, no jumping for the six weeks. So that's going to be the time for the bones to heal. Good boy! After the marathon surgery, Jimmy's earned a cosy bed and plenty of TLC from a very relieved Kate. You're a good boy, aren't you? How did you get to be such a good boy? Maybe the jerk days of Jimmy might be over. You're a good boy. You've done well. He can bear some weight on his legs. Can't you? Do you want to show everybody? Ready? Two weeks after Kate's much-loved cat Jimmy underwent surgery on his badly dislocated knees, he's wobbly but recovering well. He's been having regular laser therapy to help him heal and getting lots of cuddles from a very relieved Kate. Say okay, bye guys, got to go back to bed now. Number four. London. We're going to go see the vet. Yeah. A rare sphinx cat is about to make a grand entrance with his owner Marie. Hello. Hi Marie, how are you? Oh, I'm at my wits end, honestly. <gasps> okay, what's going on with she, Banu? Banu is in season and she's <gasps> driving me crazy. She's been um, slightly amorous with my husband, Tim. <gasps> What's she doing? She's um, rubbing her bottom <gasps> all over him. And then just to get him in the mood, she nibbles his ear. <gasps> I feel like I've walked in on a bit of a girly chat here. <laughs> We're just talking about my amorous cat. Oh, right. <laughs> like you do. 
Hello. <laughs> okay, come on in, Marie. <laughs> Banu is an incredible looking cat. She's a sphinx cat which naturally have no hair. They've got big eyes. They look a little bit like aliens. And she is really quite unhappy. It is hilarious as she tries to mount my husband. Wow. <laughs> nibble on his ears. Oh, she's trying to nibble on me as he's And, you, um, you know, she does favour, apart from you, unfortunately, she does favour the males at this time of the okay, month. Okay, and when you say favour, what are we talking? Rubbing her bottom on him right. and um, nibbling his ears. <laughs> wow, it's quite intimate, isn't it? It is. Well, let's get you out and have a little look at you. No, no, you're fine. Hey, shall we pour you out? Hey, because you are a very emotional little lady at the moment, aren't you? There, there you go. go. Oh, wow. There She's an amazing looking cat, isn't she? Wow. Banu is a really affectionate cat. She's so loving most of the time. Let's have a look at you. Okay. Oh, no, no. oh dear, you are really in a mood today, aren't you? Dear me. I think Scott's a bit scared. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, hey. I love you, but I you. <laughs> I think he's um, slightly petrified of Banu. When they can't enact their natural behaviours, they're going to get frustrated. Yeah. All right, baby. I don't know whether she's in pain or not. I don't really understand it. But basically, what we have to do is we have to lock her in the bathroom with her litter, her cat food and her bed, and it's the only place that she'll calm down. Spaying will relieve Banu's torment, but first, Scott must check if the frisky feline is healthy enough to undergo a general anaesthetic. Normally when listening to animals' hearts, what we can hear in a healthy animal is love-dub, love-dub, love-dub. Mm. All right, sweetheart. In the case of Banu, what I can hear is a small flutter, a little, a little tiny sound, and that is not normal. It looks like her hormonal endeavors are gonna have to continue for a little while because um, I can hear a heart murmur, oh. which would suggest that part of her heart is abnormal. Oh. Heart murmurs really aren't very common in cats. It's like a ticking time bomb. One day they can be fine, and the next day they can be near death. Oh. <sighs> but what also is a concern here is that, of course, to spay her, we need to give her an anaesthetic. And an anaesthetic in a cat with a heart murmur is very risky indeed. It increases the risk dramatically. Okay. So, unfortunately for now, you and your husband have to deal with that moody behaviour <laughs> for a little yeah. longer. Oh. Banu will now need to go to Scott's referral hospital, the Royal Veterinary College, for a heart scan. If they find at the Royal Veterinary College that she has an abnormality in the heart that's significant, then surgery may be the only option to allow Banu to live a normal, healthy life. So Marie has got a very difficult and tricky time ahead of her. I'm pretty upset considering that Banu can actually die from this. Is you know, I came in laughing this morning and now I'm leaving really, really worried. Oh, it's okay, Banu. We're gonna get you sorted, okay? Let's go. Come on. Oh, it's okay. At the Royal Veterinary Let's College, go. Marie has arrived with her grumpy Sphinx cat for Banu's appointment with cardiologist Ilaria Speller. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm Marie. I'm Laurie, nice to meet you. Who's who we have here today? Uh, this is Banu. Hello, Come Banu. to get her heart checked. Banu oh, needs cool. to be spayed to stop her sexual frustration and extreme mood swings. But recently, Scott diagnosed the one-year-old with a heart murmur. Thanks. So we are ready to go. Great. Please Thank come you. follow me. Today, a scan will determine if it's safe for surgery to go ahead. If Banu can't get spayed, it's going to be really stressful for the family and for Banu. But our main priority just now is the heart murmur and making sure that she's OK. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I know. It's all very scary, isn't it? Banu is a big part of our family. Everybody adores her and loves her. So to think there might be something seriously wrong with her is really scary. OK, Banu, are you ready? Good girl. Good. 
Some cats have murmurs that are not related to any disease, and some other cats unfortunately have a murmur, and that may impact their life expectancy and long-term prognosis. Oh no! We're sorry. True to her recent form with Scott, Banu is proving to be a handful for the medical oh, team conducting the scan. Yes. My nose! <laughs> I know. That's oh, called darling. jelly. Oh, okay. Here. You tell us. Oh, I know. I feel really nervous. I've got butterflies, and I think that's just not knowing what Ilaria's going to tell me about Banu's condition. Ilaria, here we go. <laughs> what we found during the scan is that she's got a little hole in her heart. Okay. But the hole was sealed. So we went hunting for other causes of the murmur and we couldn't find any other. Okay. So the good news is that her murmur is not associated with any disease. So she doesn't need, you know, any surgery. treatment. Oh, she can go ahead with surgery. She can be spayed. There is no evidence of any abnormalities, and that is really good news. She's got normal life expectancy, no problems at all. We consider her heart to be normal. I'm so relieved yeah. that her heart is fine because we love her so much. I just can't imagine anything bad happening to her. And now we can get her spayed, which is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you lots of cuddles tonight. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Oh. With the all clear, Banu will now be booked in for surgery with Scott as soon as possible. This is the best news that I've had all week. We've been so worried and it is such a relief and I just feel less stressed already. Come on, let's get you home. Get you lots of treats. Come on. How are you? Good. First of all, Good. hug for great news. Oh. Marie and Banu are back at the St Margaret's practice after the one-year-old Sphinx cat was cleared of a serious heart condition. Well, we're not completely out of the woods, because obviously today we are going to have to spare her and try and reduce her uh, sex pestering ways. <laughs> <laughs> the moody little miss can finally have the operation she needs to get her raging hormones under control. We're just hoping from the operation that she can be her usual happy self, that she is nine times out of ten. <laughs> Come on! Wow. Come on. Beautiful job. Well, you know, we're coming into um, colder times now. Yes, oh. Mummy needs to get a matching one. Oh. Banu comes out of the cage and is wearing a lovely knit jumper, of which Marie is very proud of. Knit jumpers on a sphinx cat? You know, OK. <laughs> Are we being serious with this? I mean... Banny, you look ridiculous. What's wrong? <laughs> she looks gorgeous. Ooh, wow, she is loving me today. It was because I mentioned your fashion. You never comment on a lady's never clothing. Never dis fashion. All fashion jokes aside, it is a serious day for this little lady. Now we just need to get you through this and hopefully you'll be a bit less cantankerous. Could you try? No. That's the answer. A resolute no. <laughs> no. All right, do you want to say goodbye to Mummy? Oh, goodbye. Oh, I know. I love you. Banu is part of our family. She's like our fourth child. Everybody just adores her and loves her. I'll see you after. Be good. Well, OK. Bye. Bye, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. See you, Marie. So obviously we're going to be worried about her today, going under anaesthetic. But I know that she's in really, really good hands with Scott. Come on then, Chuckles. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Hello. Oh, oh my goodness. Hello. Yeah. Very, very happy customer. <laughs> I'm just hopeful that because you don't look dissimilar to her mum, that she might like you a little bit more than she likes me. Hey. Hey. It's OK. Hey. Look at me. But Banu soon makes it clear that Jess is not going to placate her. Oh, right. Wowza. Right, so... Because she is so mad and so stressed, rather than trying to give her an injection, I think it's best we just give her some gas 
Uh, calm her down nicely and then we can move forward with the spay. All right, so we're ready. Well done. Good girl. Oh, no. It's all right. Oh, good girl. Even though we have proven that her heart is okay, I still think she is as a patient that we want to watch very closely. Oh, well, that's better. That's the one. Okay, so she can just flop over there. Banu is finally under, but it's not long before Scott is feeling even more pressure. She's just not breathing right now. Sometimes they just go down quite deeply, and although the anaesthetic was given very, very gently, Banu has stopped breathing, and it's emergency situation right there. Come on. Come on, take a breath. She's not breathing right now, so we just need to encourage her to do so. Good girl. At the St. Margaret's practice, it's a tense moment for Scott and Jess. Come on, sweetheart. Banu has stopped breathing after being anaesthetised. Is that her? Is that her? Yeah. There, yeah. and again. Yay! Good girl. OK. <laughs> Yet again, Banu, you are trouble. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's much better. So Banu decided that she wasn't going to breathe for a little bit longer than is comfortable. So I think she just wanted me to sweat a bit. <laughs> so. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there's problems when Jess and I aren't saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> when it's gone quiet, that's when, when it's got you know quiet, then you know there's something. Yeah, yeah, OK. I wonder if it's because I was mean to her about a jumper. I was going to say, do you want to keep that on and we just tuck it up? Just as long as you breathe, I don't care what you wear. Just, there we go. Breathing is Girl. good. Jumper optional. <laughs> With Banu now stable, the spaying of the highly strung Sphinx cat can safely begin. All good up this end, Scott. Yeah, happy. OK, so just about to cut. The surgery involves removing both Banu's ovaries and much of her uterus. So although this is a fairly routine procedure, I think for this cat, it's going to make a huge difference to her quality of life. This is a very hormonal, very stressed lady, and removing the factory for the hormones, the ovaries, is going to make all the difference in her life. There's one ovary there, and you can see it's very active, and look, this cat is a very hormonal girl right now. I have to be careful what I say. I'm surrounded by women, so I can't say anything bad. Yeah. Jess, we're all done. She can wake up. Lovely. Right. Don't know if she'll like me anymore before or after the surgery. It's so hard to tell. We'll see. <laughs> I'm really happy that Banu has come through the anaesthetic. Initially, a little bit of a scare for us, but she's come through perfectly fine, and she's going to recover from this and hopefully enjoy a hormone-free life. Upstairs, Ona Marie is anxiously waiting for Banu to wake up. I'm really excited to get her back and give her some cuddles and give her some TLC um, and know that she's OK. Right, let's see how much happy you are after that spay. Oh, maybe not so much. Hey. Although her reproductive organs have been removed, it will still take several weeks for Banu's hormone levels to settle down. Come on. Goodness. Wow, what was all that about? I must say I'm a little shocked at how Banu has behaved towards me. I'm hoping it's just hormones and that given a few weeks once they've calmed down, I can go and see her at home and she'll give me a cuddle. Fingers crossed. Hi, Marie. He's your little treasure. Oh! <laughs> Hello, baby. What have they been doing? I know you're going to be so angry with me. Do you want to come and see Mommy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. She is she wholeheartedly be. unimpressed. I know. With me. Oh, I know. It's OK. It feels really good to get Banu back. Been worried all day about her and just to see that she's okay is brilliant. 
Well, thank you so much for looking after her. It's been um, a pleasure. Or, or has it been? <laughs> It's certainly not been a pleasure for her, I can tell you that much. Hopefully you'll meet her when she's a bit nicer. No frowning. Too young for Botox. Shh, <laughs> Keep your face calm. Yeah, you're a good girl. See how happy she is, Jude? Yeah. And one week after being spayed, Sphinx cat Banu finally appears to have calmed down. Ooh, is that nice? Is that nice? Good spot there. <laughs> I know. Oh dear, you are really in a mood today, aren't you? Dear me. Prior to her operation, the feisty feline was consumed with hormone-induced frustration. Oh, hey, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> All right, baby girl. Now she's a picture of serenity, giving cuddles to her owner Marie and her son Jude. Good girl, Bunny. We are so happy to have Banu home. Her recovery has been fantastic and she's calmer already. I know Scott said it would be a few weeks, but there's definitely a difference in her behaviour already. But the big test is whether Banu will finally relent and give a warm welcome to Scott. Hey, Marie, Hello, how are you? Hello, Scott. Good, how are you? Really well, really well, nice thanks. Nice to see you. Do you want to come Trust in? Trust you, well, I'll see. <laughs> How do you feel things have gone? Do you feel like it's made a big difference? It's made a really big difference. Already she's calmer. It's like she's happier. Like we've released her from the burden of, of hormones. Of hormones. And yeah. she's like, ah, oh, I'm so much better. And now the big test is to see if actually she is a bit more, well, nice to me. Can I sort of stroke you a little bit? <laughs> Banu is reacting the way Banu does. She hates me. Oh, yeah, pound of flesh and all that. Oh. oh, I think she really is unimpressed about my presence in her house and in her life generally. But I'm really happy to report that it seems like her life has got much better in the presence of Marie and the family. Oh, hello. Oh, well, that's an improvement. And you're going to launch. Oh, wow. I feel honoured. Oh, that was progress. <laughs> that was progress, that was, yeah. That was big progress. Yes, yeah, yeah, I can touch her without her savaging yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> this week's number three. Okay, here we are. In Sydney, Audrey and Alison are answering an SOS from a worried cat owner. She's found all these horrible lesions all mm. over its face. We don't know if it's scratch. All over its neck and its ears. And whether it's flea problems, so we'll go check it out. Mickey, where are you? Come on. The vet's going to come now. Come on. Amber has okay. two cats, 19-year-old Rubens and 10-year-old Mickey. Hi. Hi, Amber. Hi. How are you? Good. Come in. Here to see Mickey. He's not yeah. well. No, poor thing. Mickey's about 10 years old and we've had him since he was a kitten, six months old. He belonged to a neighbour but he decided he liked us better. Your vets are here, Mickey. Oh, he's probably hiding. I'm sure Where he's hiding. You? I'm sure he's around here somewhere. So we get down on our hands and knees. Oh, yep, there he is. Shy Mickey knows something's up. Oh! oh. 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 There he is. There he is. Oh, 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 oh. oh. So we get the cat out, we pop it on the table, and we give it an initial check. Okay. And so how is he in himself? Is he eating and drinking okay? That's fine, that's normal, uh, but he's just miserable. He's just lost his joy for life. <laughs> I think we're going to have to take him out to the van, have okay. a really good look at these legions, maybe take a sample as well. And he's getting a little bit stressed. So we'll pop him in his carrier right. and we'll carry him out. Be interested to see if it's fungal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to stay in there? It does look very comfy. All right, Benny, let's have a look. Looks unusual, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a secondary infection to an allergy, something like that. I just have a little... Very itchy, buddy, aren't you? So we've got Mickey into the van and we're having a really good look and it just looks nasty. It's yeah. weepy, it's scaly, it looks very sore. So we take out our UV lamp. Okay, let's shine this UV light on. Um, oh, no. Look at that. Look at that lesion. 
no. In Sydney. Look at that lesion. Audrey and Alison are checking nasty skin lesions on 10-year-old Mickey. Look at that border, the periphery just glowing there on the hair. Mm, the fact that it's doing that on the newest lesion and around the periphery is... So these lesions are glowing. There's a bright green colour around the edges. It's definitely a positive for fungal infection called ringworm. Oh, buddy, look. Buddy. That's impressive. So ringworm can turn pretty nasty. It tends to spread like wildfire in cats. It can spread to the other cat. Oh, that's a good Ooh, one. Oh, look at that. Now we're worried because this can spread to us. It's a zoonotic infection. Mm -hmm. So we should probably clean up, put some gloves on. So let's take all the precautions. Gloves it is. So we're giving him a fungal bath. So we're using a special antifungal shampoo and just rubbing that onto the areas for about 10 minutes. You're so good. There is the place to play soccer. So I'm going to clean all around his head. It's quite interesting because actually it's spreading on all the areas. He's scratching with his back foot. So I think he's actually scratching one spot and then spreading it all around his face and neck. Although the special shampoo will help soothe Mickey's badly inflamed skin, he's not looking too impressed. When we had the light just shining on his claws and his paws, they were glowing as well. So that's probably where he's spreading it from. So we'll let the medicated shampoo on now for 10 minutes. And now we're going to pop the cream on. It's a fungal cream, and that's going to help clear up that fungal infection a lot quicker. OK, let's go tell mum the bad news, huh? Oh, no. Look at that. Look at that lesion. Audrey and Alison have just discovered ringworm is the cause of Mickey's badly inflamed skin. They're now concerned the highly contagious fungal infection could have spread to Mickey's housemate, Rubens. You can see he's quite wet and he looks a little yes. bit oily because we washed all the lesions and we actually popped a cream on. Okay. The first test we did was shine an ultraviolet light all over his skin. And what that looks for is fungus. Mm -hmm. So if he has got fungal lesions, they'll tend to glow an apple green color mm -hmm. and he was positive all over. Oh. And that's a classic ringworm. Uh -huh. It also means that I need to check Rubens to make sure he hasn't caught it. Good luck with that. Mm. <laughs> So Ruben, the other cat, is sitting there really nicely on the chair, looking really chilled. But we know Ruben, and he can be quite feisty. So it's actually going to be a challenge to do this test. 19-year-old Ruben's does not like vets. What do you think the best way is for us to approach him? I think just the two of you get in there and just do the mm -hmm. tough love. You know, okay. one holds him one All end right. and the other end, um, because, yeah, he's, <laughs> right. he's not going to like it. Oh, Rubens, it's okay. We're just going to shine a light on you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh. So Ruben isn't as nice as you think. He's putting up a bit of a struggle. He's growling, he's scratching. <laughs> Ringworm is highly contagious. So despite his protests, the girls are determined to thoroughly check Grumpy Rubens. Oh, oh Rubens. Ruben's looking pretty good. We can't see any glows. We've checked the whole surface of him. Rubens. So clear bill of health and no fungus there. Thank oh. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> A big part of treating the cat is also treating the environment. Because these funguses release spores into the environment, anyone can pick it up. So we need to give it a really good vacuum yep. and also wipe down the surface as you can. Yep. With diluted bleach is probably the best option. Right. Um, so a really good vacuum of all the areas that yep. Mickey lies in. Yep. Great. Extra housework. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With regular treatment, Mickey should be ringworm free in a few weeks. Number two. Pretty good. It uh, says it, doesn't it? Well, I think it's got to say it today. Because? Who's yeah. that for? Well, it's for you, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. for our lovely Digby that's coming to see us today. In Isleworth, South West London, <laughs> Scott, yeah. nurse Nathan yeah. and receptionist Elle yeah. are putting up a brave front as they prepare to meet a new patient. <laughs> and do I get any danger money for this? Nothing to worry about at all, yeah, Nathan. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. Don't worry about it, Nathan. They're looking nervous, they'll hold up the sign. Hello. Hi. Mother and daughter Sharon and Amy have already warned them about the intimidating behaviour of their six-year-old Rottweiler, Digby. 
The problem is the Rottweiler has now developed a mass in his chest. Good boy. Good boy. Owner Sharon knew she had to find a vet who would take a risk. Digby at home is an absolute softie. He is sweet, he's affectionate, and he loves a cuddle. But take him out anywhere to meet any other dog or anybody else but the immediate family, and that 50 kilograms of love turns into 50 kilograms of raw aggression. To ensure the safety of his staff, Scott has decided to be the only stranger in the consultation room. Even the camera crew must film from outside. Sharon, why don't you jump on that side? Yeah. There you go. Digby hasn't seen a vet for quite a few years, and uh, the last vet he saw didn't know what to do. Um, he was nervous of him, um, but luckily we found Scott. Sit down. Oh, no. Sharon came in to see me after she saw Bam Bam and the way that I treated him in the first series of Vet on the Hill. Calm down. But there's a massive difference between the feisty Bam Bam Oh, no. And the all-powerful 110-pound Digby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay. All right, settle down. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere. A lot of people would say straight away, that's an aggressive dog. It should be put down. And I understand that. But the situation here is that they got a dog that was friendly and happy and healthy as a puppy. It has grown up to be aggressive. And it's aggressive for one reason, because it's fearful. It is not innately evil. This dog is a friendly dog that it gets scared. And he gets scared and then he gets aggressive. We always make sure for him, we put a muzzle on and he's safe when he goes out. He's just being responsible, really. I'm trying to rush this relationship, which is never a good idea, is it? OK. Because when we take him out, you get people to stare. And they do make some nasty comments, why don't you put that dog down? Yeah. It makes me angry. No, we never, ever put him down. We love him to bits. <laughs> we've had him as a puppy. We've shown no aggression to him whatsoever. So he's inbred from the mother. <laughs> Come out on him. <laughs> Stop it. As Digby remains alert and agitated, Scott's still a long way from being able to examine the lump on the Rottweiler's chest. Soppy old thing, aren't you, eh? This job sometimes throws curveballs, and aggressive dogs come in, aggressive cats come in, and you've got to treat them, you've got to deal with them, so you've got to find a way to make it work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Oh, all right, all right. At Isleworth, Scott's slowly trying to calm down the aggressive Digby so he can examine a mass on his chest. So, Amy, so tell me about the lump. Like, when did you first find it? Ever since it was about three or four months ago. Yeah, yeah. Ever since, so I've been trying to find a vet. Owners Sharon and Amy have not dared take the Rottweiler to a vet since their last visit years ago ended badly. He was very nervous, moving his arms around. He couldn't get up close to Digby, and when he did, he spoke, and then Digby went berserk. Oh, he's a good, brave boy. After 30 minutes in the consultation room, Scott makes his first attempt to feel Digby's chest. Oh, it'll give you a bit of a tickle there, eh? Hey? Hey? Oh. Digby, okay. no! All right, I know. I'm not trying to win the argument straight away. Oh, I know. I know. I'm sorry. The whole time he's lunging at me, I'm just telling myself, be calm, don't react, don't move, stay still. Oh. All right. All right. Am I scared? Are you kidding? I'm bricking it. 50 kilograms of raw muscle power coming at you with bared teeth and growling. And every instinct is saying, keep your distance. But then I look at Sharon and Amy and I see their faces just literally saying, please help us, you are our last chance. After another 20 minutes, a breakthrough. But you know what I can see with him is I can really see that he is actually a sweetheart. I can see that. Scott finally appears to be gaining Digby's trust. You're trying to be aggro, but I can see you're sweet and lovely, really, aren't you? And look what you're letting me do. Oh, he's a sweet boy. Oh, he's a sweet boy. 
I mean, the good thing with Scott was that he did remain calm and he didn't have eye contact and he did manage to stroke Digby, which no stranger has ever done. I couldn't believe it, really. I'm just using some acupuncture points as well. There's one on the tip of his ears that just chills him out a little bit. They're always nice. Oh, I feel very honoured. I must say that when I was finally able to touch Digby for the first time, it was exhilarating. I mean, it was like touching a wild animal. And to give him a little scratch under the chin, honestly, it gave me goosebumps. It was amazing. What a handsome big pussycat. Eh? Big 50 kilogram big teeth pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was lovely having the love in with Digby, but it was always going to end. And it was going to end in the form of a sharp needle in his butt. Do you want to put him into this corner maybe and then he can't yeah. push back? And that was never going to bring out his happy side. I went from hero to zero, but sadly it needed to be done to knock him out, but he wasn't impressed. Done. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm a, definitely a swear word that I can't say, aren't I, mate? But with Digby's be, adrenaline pumping out of control, the huge quantity of sedation is not enough. And Digby is still a threat. It was incredible to see just how much drugs this dog took. He was like a rogue elephant. It's all right. Nice sleepy time now. Hmm? Scott is attempting to examine a suspicious lump on Digby's chest. But despite sedation, the huge 110-pound Rottweiler is still putting up a fight. Today is all about getting to grips with the lump and actually just removing it. Normally, there'd be a whole bunch of steps and examinations that we do prior to this kind of surgery. That's just not an option with Digby. So what I need to do today is knock him out, I need to remove the lump and hopefully send them home with good news. All this activity will actually make him go down in a second. He'll, he's more likely to crash and uh, sleep. Now he's energised himself, blood supply is flowing, those drugs will kick in a little more. So after two injections of sedation, which would have been enough to knock out a rhino, he finally is calm enough that I can get an IV anaesthetic into him. One, two, three. Good boy. Now we've got to get him down the stairs and I'm walking down thinking, this better not be cancer. Not only because it's dreadful news for any owner, but from Digby's point of view, how the hell am I ever going to treat this dog if it is cancer? So, fingers crossed, it comes out of something not to worry about. Oh, yeah, I can feel it now, yeah. yeah. It's quite a, quite a decent size. Yeah, it's a big one and getting bigger. Okay, let's get going. Okay. So, let's see what this nasty little thing has in store for us. too bad to me if I cut through the middle. Nate, that looks a hell of a lot like fat. Nice, healthy, white, glistening fat. So that means there's almost certainly to be a lipoma. Nothing to worry about, which is great news for Digby. Mate, you don't need any more vets, do you? <laughs> no. Straight away, I think Sharon and Amy are going to be over the moon. They're going to be so happy. I mean, this is their boy. This is their love. And the fact that this is one surgery that we can perform, we can fix the problem straight away, and he potentially doesn't need to come back and see me, is good news. Okay. Good boy. That's it. All done. Digby will now sleep off his anaesthetic in the recovery room. But Scott remains wary. Right. He woke up very quickly. <laughs> and I'm going to exit. Upstairs, boy. Sharon and Amy are waiting for the verdict. Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. So, you look very expectant and very worried, but, in fact, it's all good news. It looks like a fatty growth, which is called lipoma, um, which is 
Really good news. I should be seeing smiles. It's good. Should be seeing smiles. <laughs> no, it's good. You happy? It is good news. It is good news, yeah. isn't it? I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. I've put sutures that don't need to be removed. So literally, it's a case of taking him home yeah. and uh, hopefully living a, a happy and healthy life. I'm glad. I was yeah. worried with you. I thought it would be something more serious. Yeah. But I can see he's definitely got a kind heart in there. He's just quite misunderstood. He's a lovely dog. He's, he's fantastic at home. I'm good about him. But I'm just really glad that I've been able to hand back your beloved dog with my two hands intact. That's quite yeah. nice. <laughs> That's a plus side. And without a lump on his chest. Yeah. yeah. It means a lot of what you've done. There's no other vet that we actually see him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. Thanks very much. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, you're perfect. You're a perfect vet. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Oh, thanks. Well, that, that, that honestly means a lot. Can we choked up a bit there? Lovely, thank you. No, I don't think I'm anything special. I'm literally just a vet doing his job, but uh, I'm glad that she was happy. All right, so he's just through here. Scott's going to feel right. even happier when Digby's on his feet and walking out the front door. Digby, baby. Digby, sweetheart. But he's definitely leaving that assignment to the immediate family. You got a softy, really. I think many people might find the fact that I treated Digby controversial. People might say that I shouldn't have given him any treatment at all. He's aggressive and he should have been put down. Good job. All right, ladies. Well, I would say to those people that he is a much-loved member of Sharon's family. They adore him, but they know that he's got problems and they've put steps in place to ensure that he's safe and everyone else around him is safe also. So I would say to them, I'll look after Digby and you look after your own dog. All the best. Bye, diggers. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Good boy. Oh, that'll take it out of a vet, that will. Jeez. Oof. Oh, good boy, good boy, come on. And this week's number one. Oh, really? I know, you're scared oh, and sore. A frightened cat has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sack with a suspected snake bite. Ooh. How are we going to handle you? But examining Dougal <laughs> is going to be very difficult. <laughs> Gives me a fright every time. This cat has apparently been found next to a black snake and according to the owners, he's got a swelling on his face. The problem is he is seriously angry and we cannot get near him. Far out, you're crazy, kitty. Oh. This is not funny because snake bites are actually really serious, but Dougal's owners are refusing to appear on camera. I think they're embarrassed by his behaviour. Well, he's in there. You're going to be fun, aren't you? So I think our only option is to give him an anaesthetic with gas. Lisa now has to get Dougal into the anaesthetic chamber. Should have a first aid kit. The question is, can the team do it without casualties? Dougal is nuts. He could really hurt someone. He is a shredding machine. <laughs> At Sash, Lisa's trying to get close enough to the frightened Dougal to find out if he's been bitten by a snake. Now let's just hope we can actually get him into the anaesthetic chamber without any casualties. Got him? Yep. Yeah. Alright. Watch your hand, Vic. Three people to wrestle a five kilo cat, isn't that just great? It's taken a few minutes, but Dougal is finally under my control, and now I can actually start looking for the bite site. The problem is we've already lost valuable time, and if Dougal has been bitten by a black snake, then that venom is already attacking his system. I think we've definitely got some soft swelling over here, um, and two puncture wounds over there. With puncture wounds found, Lisa has the evidence she needs to start giving Dougal the anti-venom treatment. Give him five minutes for those meds to kick in. He can't even lift his head and he's growling already. Not a happy camper. Even though everyone's having a laugh about Dougal's personality and how aggro he is, it actually is quite a serious situation. 
minutes. Normally we give it over half an hour, but we'll just go a little bit slower in him. I just don't want him to have a reaction. The problem with black snake bites is that the animals can actually get worse before they get better. Sometimes they can have delayed signs, so it's really important that we keep a close eye on Dougal and only send him home when we're 100% sure he's recovered. Yes. This is a different cat because before he was lunging at the cage and now oh. he wants some kisses. Hey. Look at you! Sasha's most feared patient has survived a snake bite. Oh my goodness! What a different cat! And appears to have had a personality transformation. He was like a wild zoo animal that we couldn't get near without sedation. Now he practically came out of the cage to cuddle us and he is just a completely different cat. Hello buddy! But there will be one more test of this prickly Thank patient's you. personality. I still don't trust you though, buddy. I'm no, sorry. I don't trust you either. After your performance, we're going to be taking out his IV catheter, which is not pleasant for even the nicest of cats. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge with Dougal. We've got some sedation ready in case he decides to not play with us. Or he does decide to play with us. In his way, <laughs> not our way. <laughs> We are One, two, three. Come on, Turkey. All right, just a band aid. Worst is over. It's all over. I'm always happy to see my patients go home because it means that they're better, but I don't think Dougal's going to be on my Christmas card list. And I've given him strict instructions that he needs to be a good boy to his family. He really needs to keep the only friends that he's got. So, Dougal, you happy to be leaving us at Sash? Please don't come back. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.